Hey guys, if you've been working with used 18650 cells for a while now, um, you probably have one or more Opus chargers, and if you've been doing it for long enough, you probably have one or more Opus chargers with problems. This particular charger has a dead slot on the left. It will charge the battery up, but it won't run the discharge test. As soon as the battery reaches full charge and it goes to start the discharge test, it immediately reports some useless number like 2 or 3 milliamps and then stops. So today I'm going to go over what causes that, how you can fix it, and how you can prevent it. So to access the internals of your charger, there are four Phillips screws you need to remove. One here, one here, and two down here. And I already took them out of this charger, so you'll see the board on the inside here. And the reason why these stop working is because as it's testing cells, it's burning off that energy as heat. And that's how it determines what the capacity of the cell is. And 90% of the time when these fail, it's because one or more of these discharge resistors has fallen off or has a cold joint. So immediately looking at this charger down here, you'll see the resistor that belongs right here is missing. I have no idea where it's at. It's not floating around in here anywhere. There's no rattle noises. You're probably not going to be able to see it on camera, but if you look at some of these other ones, this, the solder joints just aren't, there's not much solder in there. So with the heat these are generating, if it gets hot enough, they can easily come loose through melting that solder or just crumbling. And it's not just the heat generated by these resistors. Sometimes you'll get a cell that gets hot while charging, specifically the Sanyo cells are known for that. And when that cell is in the charger, before you notice it's hot and remove it, um, that heat is dissipating somewhere, whether it be, you know, up through the air or some of the heat does go down into this. Another reason why that could be happening is because you have a failed cooling fan, kind of like you hear over here. This fan's making a grinding noise because the bearings are most likely going bad. Over here you'll see a similar issue. There's no cell in the slot, but it's just flipping between 0.2 volts and off. Um, I'll be taking this one apart next and seeing if I can figure out what's wrong with it. But the issue we're seeing with this one is by far the most common. A lot of people are going to be hating on these chargers saying, oh, they're not very good. Why don't you buy a Lido Kala or a Fox Nova or whatever else? And the fact of the matter is these chargers are good and that's why I buy them. And if anybody actually knew how many cells I've put through these chargers, you would be amazed. It's got to be easily 30 to 40,000, maybe 50,000 cells I've put through my batch of Opus chargers. So they have definitely seen a workout and they definitely have lasted much longer than expected. And also I know somebody's going to point out what's going on over here. Uh, this was originally my donor charger for donor parts. And then once I started working on it a little more, um, I did fix those resistors. But unfortunately some of the coating has been scraped off. So that's not a result of it being used, that's a result of me trying to repair it and using it for parts before. You might be able to see on camera, maybe not really, but the number on these resistors is 5R10. That means they are 5.1 ohm resistors. So I went on the internet, I can't remember if it was AliExpress or eBay, it might have been AliExpress, and I got this big roll of 5.1 ohm mini resistors. So I have this small soldering iron, it's 110 volt, 60 watt. Um, it's got a temperature dial. I have it set for around 225 or so degrees Celsius. Uh, most solder melts around 180 to 190 degrees Celsius. So the first thing I want to do is just use a little bit of solder wick to clean up the remaining solder on this connection. Then I use this little flat tip screwdriver because it's magnetized just enough that I can pick up these little resistors and drop them into place. Uh, a pair of forceps would probably be easier if you have one. I do, I just don't really feel like going to get it. Um, so once that resistor is into place, it's going to stick to the soldering. It's going to try to stick to the soldering iron as soon as I put some solder on, but you just want to put a little bit on one side first to start. And then you can sort of use your flat tip screwdriver to hold it in place. And you can do the other side. And make sure you got a good connection on the first side. So there you have it. It's that simple. You can see the new resistor is soldered into place right here. So now's the time to replace the fan as well if you have a failed fan. You simply remove this connector over here and the fan will slide out this way. Uh, you can get those fans on AliExpress as well. I think they're like 50 cents or a dollar. They're, they're super cheap. But as for ways you can prevent this from happening. The first way is I've seen on Thingverse.com, which is a site for 3D printing and sharing templates. There is somebody who came up with a back replacement case that replaces this back case for the Opus charger and puts a standard 80mm computer fan in there. And that would mount down here and your computer fan air would blow in and then blow out the back. 
I've seen other people as well who just simply leave this back off and then they'll mount it like like an inch or half inch or so off of uh, wood channel where they'll channel air through underneath with a higher powered fan on the side and that allows you to cool more than one opus with the same fan. I don't have a 3D printer and I don't really have the time to design a mounting system for this so I'm simply going to put this back on and back over here we'll plug it in. We'll put it on charge test mode. Sell in. All right, so I'll come back in a couple of hours once that has reached full charge and started discharging and just verify that it's working correctly. All right, guys, so here we are back at the charger. Uh, it's about a day later. And you can see it completed testing in 4 hours and 59 minutes. And the capacity of the battery was 2,225 milliamp hours. So I can now say that this slot has been fixed and this charger is back to being operational. Those resistors are super cheap. They are pennies a piece. Certainly much more budget friendly to just replace the resistor with a little bit of soldering than to go through and buy a new charger. And like I said, 9 times out of 10, with these chargers when they have a bad slot the resistors are the reason why so if you do have a bad slot check it for resistors that are missing replace any resistors that may have fallen off and reflow the solder on the remaining discharge resistors hopefully you found this video helpful if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments please leave them below thanks for watching